Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere at the Prophecy Watchers studio, I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. This is a very special edition, and we're not doing too many of these, of Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural Report. <laughs> at the Prophecy Watcher studio with uh, elder brother Gary German. This is a huge honor for me. Gary, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Well, L.A., it's my pleasure. And boy, do we live in exciting times. Yes, we certainly do. And we're going to get into this and so much more. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Chances are you've been here before. The chaos in the markets, oil and stocks. Just when you thought it was safe and interest rates were rising, new threats come out of nowhere. Tensions are boiling from Asia to Europe. Adaption is the key here to safeguarding your wealth. You may have not considered gold before, but folks, it's not speculation, it's insurance. And right now, I think all of us need as much insurance as we possibly can get. Noble Gold Investments have been protecting investors from disaster for years with precious metals. If you're worried, it might be time to take a fresh look at gold and silver. Gold is a proven safe haven shield for your portfolio and a volatility balance against uncertainty. If it helps, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free three ounce silver American virtue coin with its new IRAs this month. If you open up your gold investment IRA or 401k rollover, you can claim your coin today. Remember, crisis brews, portfolios waiver, gold insulates. Folks, We've done it. Gold uh, is hitting some record highs, at least it was last week. We'll see what it continues to do. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Noblegoldinvestments.com. We've invested, and it's the only gold company I trust. Once again, noblegoldinvestments.com. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. And um, I want to thank Prophecy Watchers, prophecywatchers.com, for allowing me to come into their studio um, and sort of do a role reversal here. Uh, usually Gary interviews me, now I get to interview him. So it's a great honor. And thank you, Gary, once again, I appreciate that. So much is going on in the Middle East right now. Yes. And it, it's almost, well, it is biblical. And I know that you believe it's biblical. I believe it's biblical. But you told me uh, before we even got to this, about a prophecy in our Bibles, specifically from the prophet Zephaniah. And I haven't read Zephaniah, I'm going to say, at least 10 years. So I'm like, oh boy, I'm not even sure. Yeah, what, you say what Zephaniah means. and somebody says, yes, what? what? That's in the Bible? Exactly. And it is <clears throat> a very minor, minor prophet. But actually, he's not a minor, minor prophet. He has a lot to say, particularly to us today because he's talking, I believe, about what's going on right now. <clears throat> and probably the least uh, read prophet in the Bible is now super important. And he's talking about a, a little strip of land that, that we have called the, the Gaza Strip uh, in, in uh, oh, the last year or two, it's just Gaza. But for years and years, it was the Gaza Strip. And then before that, the Gaza Strip on the Mediterranean was occupied by the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it's the same bloodline of people who are back again, doing what they did before, only with more vengeance. And so we see the, the, what happened on October 7th, which is the keystone to all of us, where, in fact, I was at the Prophecy Watchers Conference, and you and I had spoken um, just shortly before that, mm -hmm. and you were telling me you felt something something big was about to happen. You didn't set a date on it, but you said, I think something big is going to happen. And then, what, a couple of days later, two weeks later, whatever it was, yeah. this whole thing exploded in the Middle East. So tell us how the prophecy of Zephaniah plays into what we are seeing in Israel right now. Well, the the thing that, that Zephaniah, and again, I have to say probably the least read prophet in the Bible, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, he, uh, he's talking about uh, the day of the Lord. 
that's if you look at the overall theme of the prophecy he I don't know how many times but it's got to be around 10 or 15 times he says the day of the Lord is near and I'm looking at Zephaniah 114 the great day of the Lord is near it is near and hasteth greatly even the voice of the day of the Lord the mighty man shall cry there bitterly mm. and so he says I'm warning you, something is about to happen. It's, gonna, it's not going to be good. He, uh, he then talks about the ancient uh, evil gods that plagued Israel, Baal. And uh, he talks about the, the Camarims uh, with the priests. And he said, talks about the god uh, Malcolm or, or Molech. And so he says... <coughs> Those gods are still active as they were in the old days. And as you go down through uh, this prophecy, he says over and over again, I have, again, I haven't counted how many times, but he says, the day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. In that same day, I will punish all of those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's uh, houses with violence and deceit. And that's the thrust of this whole prophecy and uh, as you go uh, on into it it talks about <coughs> a group of people who are called uh, by the name running assassins that's unbelievable and the running assassins will come running and guess where they are coming from they are coming from Gaza and that's exactly what happened that's Mark exactly what that's happened exactly what happened and as you begin to read Zephaniah, your eyes pop because you, time after time, he's talking about things that we're reading in the newspaper right now. And so uh, again, I th I, here's the, 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 the least read prophet in the Bible suddenly becomes very, very important. <clears throat> Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast. Well, let me just go back to Zephaniah 2.4. For Gaza shall be forsaken, mm -hmm. Ashkelon a desolation, and they shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Those are all coastal countries. You can buy a map of Israel today and look at the, the Mediterranean coast. And the names that I just read are all in a row. Wow. So it's talking about the coastland and a war going on. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. And the people who live there, and we think of right now mm -hmm. uh, in rather ill terms, are called Cherethites by the prophet. And that word means running assassins. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what a modern term would be, guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare. Perhaps. Isn't that what we saw on, on October 7th, though? They, yes. they came in on hand gliders. They did. And then landed. And then they all have automatic, and they just started just mowing down people. I mean, Inju inordinately, w w indiscriminately, random, yeah, random. randomly. It was. It you was were alive. You were shot. And the idea was to create terror and in the hearts exactly of, what of the Israelites, and it, and that's what that's what happened. So, again, I'm, we're reading now about uh, Gaza. For Gaza shall be forsaken. Have you watched television lately? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gaza is being mowed down systematically. And uh, there's no stopping Israel at this point, <coughs> although the world is trying to get Israel to stop retaliating. Gaza shall be forsaken, Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. And then uh, woe to the inhabitants of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines. Now the land of the Philistines is Gaza. Right. If you look at, at yeah. the, any old biblical map, exactly. uh, the seacoast from what is today Tel Aviv. And that's where Gath, Goliath from Gath, that's where he came Absolutely. Wow. And you, if you uh, just open a map or, or maybe the one in the back of your Bible will have it, but buy a modern Israeli map. By the way, I bought one and it's just really eye-opening if you follow what's going on today. But if you look at an Israeli map, you're looking at the uh, <coughs> West Sea Coast, and it is populated by these people called Cherethites. Now, that's not what we call them today, but it's what they are, running assassins. 
And it says the seacoast is going to be mowed down, basically. <coughs> Dwellings for cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. And, and the coast shall be a remnant of the house of Judah, and they shall feed thereon. Uh, in the houses of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening. So uh, it, bit by bit, they're coming back to that land. Now, the world does not want Israel to come back to uh, that coastal country. <coughs> but the prophet says that after this war, they're going to be doing exactly that. Now, the other thing about uh, this prophecy, Zephaniah, is that it constantly refers to the nearness of the day of the Lord. And I haven't counted all the times, but everywhere you look, <coughs> you see uh, the day of the Lord. Here's one <coughs> uh, in 3.8. Uh, therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. In other words, when this begins to happen, <clears throat> the prophet is talking to Israel and he's saying, it's going to be bad, but wait, because I'm going to be coming back. And the, in essence, he's saying, I'm going to help you. Uh, I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations that I might assemble the, ki uh, assemble the kingdoms and uh, pour out my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Mm. So it's the prophecy starts out with, I'm coming very, very soon, says the Lord. And as you get toward the end, he's getting closer and closer. So when you... Uh, put these two prophecies or prophetic ideas together, mm -hmm. one being war in Gaza and the other being the day of the Lord is happening and I'm and just hang on because I'm coming uh, and, and I will uh, exonerate you. And here is the interesting thing about this, this prophecy, something we haven't even talked about yet. Uh, it mentions... Uh, Philistia to the west, <laughs> Moab and Ammon to the east, Ethiopia to the south. Now, that's a long way south. And Assyria to the north. And the prophet picks out four directions and says, those I know are your enemy, and I am going to come for them. Wow. So it mentions north, south, east, And west. when was this written? Roughly. Zephaniah, uh, uh, and again, I, I wish I could tell you, the, the it, uh, 625 B.C., so I just happen to have it. 2,600 years old. Yeah, 2,600 years are, old. And it, it appears that prophecy is being fulfilled right under our noses. It seems to be. It certainly does. You, you sort of hate to say, well, this is happening right now, right. because you never do that with the Bible. Right. Anytime you set a date or anytime you say, oh, this is happening right now, you'll, you'll be wrong. Right. <laughs> but it appears like... It does. It very much the appears. The prophecy of Zephaniah is unfolding. And I would urge anyone who is uh, listening to us right now to read Zephaniah. Absolutely. I mean, how much trouble can it be? It's three, three chapters. chapters. Very short. <laughs> so, Gary, in February, we'll be at the Prophecy Watchers Conference. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Well, the Prophecy Watchers Conference is uh, a gathering of the best minds devoted to, and what I love about these Prophecy Conferences is each of the speakers comes with his own mm -hmm. particular view of prophecy. Uh, no two are alike. And so you'll have uh, uh, up into the teens of great minds talking about what's happening right now. And each, each of them uh, from the information as God has given it to him personally. And there are so many viewpoints coming together all at once. It's, it's a unique experience. I know I'm going to be there, and it's an honor to be there. And thanks so much for watching Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural. Gary, thanks so much You're for welcome. coming on. It was really great to, to hear about Zephaniah, and I will go home tonight and read that. Folks, don't forget to go to our Christmas store, www.lamarzulli.net. Lamarzulli.net, all sorts of great deals. Don't forget our Roswell 1 and Roswell 2 pre-sale. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural Report.